Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to install some Evotech frame sliders. And this one will be specific to my bike. It's an Aprilia Shiver uh, 2013 model. So I wanted to give you guys some quick tips that I found when I started installing these, as well as what tools you need. And then just kind of give you my first impressions with just hopping on the bike, how it hits my knee and stuff like that, as well as just like how far they stick out and how they look and everything. So if you're interested in getting uh, Evotech frame sliders and want to know more, just keep watching and I'll show you some stuff that I found. You're going to need um, a 10 millimeter Allen key, hex key. Um, preferably if you have it, get one of the sockets that have it. I don't have that, so I'm just going to be using this. If you're using just the Allen key like this, you'll also want to try to get a um, breaker bar or something so you can slide it over it to get uh, more leverage basically because that bolt is very tight that's on there. So you'll need that and then you'll need two 19 millimeter or three four sockets. Um, one for just a regular ratchet to hold down and then another one on the other side. And then the last thing that you'll need is some sort of torque wrench. Um, I use the Tekton ones, they work pretty good. Not too expensive either. Uh, but you will have to torque down the bolts for this. So you wanna make sure you have one of those available. Okay, so I'm gonna show you both sides here. Um, right now we're looking at the left-hand side and where they're gonna be installed at is right under here. It's this bolt. Um, this one is the 19 millimeter one. So you wanna make sure you have a socket that can fit under there. So that's this side. This side has an actual 19 millimeter bolt and I'll show you the other side as well. And then here's the right hand side and right here is where you have your uh, 10 millimeter um, part. That's what I was saying. It's better if you have a socket that has the hex key. I don't have one that fits that, but I do have a 10 mil millimeter Allen key or wrench. So I'm going to be using that. But if you can't get enough leverage, it's always good to have something like this, just like a breaker bar so you can slide it over and get more leverage. So I'm going to be using that. But yeah, basically once you have both of those lined up, you are going to be holding that as well as bracing the other side over here and just kind of doing the, doing both to loosen them up to pull those bolts out. All right, and then you're basically just gonna have to hold both of those and loosen up whichever side you decide to do. They are on there tight, that is for sure. All right, now it's starting to break loose, but yeah, you probably will for sure need a breaker bar to loosen up this one side if you don't have a uh, a socket with the hex key on it. And then once you get it loosened up enough, you should start seeing the other end turning just like that. So now I'm just gonna hold it kind of in place while I loosen this up. So once you get it loosened up, it's a lot easier. You should be able to just turn it kind of the other way. All right, so that side's pretty loose. And then on the other side, the nut just came off, so you'll have that. And so once you get it far enough through here, you might be able to get a hold of it. I'm just gonna push it through on the other side. Okay, and then so you should just have the Allen key with the, uh, the washer on it. All right, and, and your package is pretty straightforward. I mean, it comes all assembled here for you, but it basically has both sides. They're the same on both sides, so that it doesn't need to go, into, go inside the frame in any particular order. Um, but they both do have nuts on the end, so you won't have to use the Allen key for them. That's why I was saying earlier you need uh, two 19 millimeter sockets because you need to hold, hold one side down and you can't really fit a wrench in there, so you definitely need two of those sockets. All right, so what you'll want to do first is just take off the nut on one side as well as the washer. So just keep them in the right order. So nut, washer, the actual slider, and then this piece as well right here. So just take off all of that from one side and then you should just have it where um, it's empty like that on one side and then the other side has the full side. So you just slide that right through and then be sure to grab your spacer if you're starting from the left side. I'd probably recommend starting on the left side since that's where the spacer needs to go anyway. So you wanna make sure you put that back in there. The slider, or I'm sorry, the spacer seems like it's gonna be easiest to bring it in from the side, kind of under here. You might just have to kind of hold it in place a little bit. Yeah, probably gonna have to just hold it in place and then try to get that through. And just make sure the slider goes through it. So you kind of have to hold that, or the spacer, I'm sorry, the spacer. Hold the spacer while you're sliding that through. There we go. And it should go all the way through like that. All right, so now we're on the right-hand side and you should have the rod 
coming out like that. And that'll allow you to just slide the other end over. So first you'll want to have this part going through and it's gonna go in this direction with the spacer um, facing out. So just kind of slide that over and the main piece. And then your washer and then your nut. And then you'll just kind of want to hand tighten that on there if you can. It's a little hard to get, get to. At least give it a few spins before you start cranking down on it. And before you start really cranking down on it, after you hand tightened it a little bit, it's probably a good idea just to hold the socket over one side and just kind of do it just a tad until it gets a little tight. All right, so I've got a little bit tight there. All right, and what you're gonna to wanna to have this set at is 85 Newton meters, which is pretty much like 62 and a half, tad more than 62 and a half uh, foot pounds. So depending on what torque wrench you have, you can use either, uh, I'm using foot pounds on mine. It's a little bit easier to read on, on mine. So just get that torqued properly and then just start cranking down on it. There we are. So here they are. They don't stick out too much. And they blend in pretty well with the frame in my opinion. So here it is from the side. Here's the other side as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop on, see if they hit my knees and things like that and just kinda get a feel for them. Obviously I'm on a standard bike, standard position. Plenty of clearance here. Doesn't seem like I'm gonna, they're gonna be in the way at all. I would say though, if you start leaning off, um, my knee's starting to hit it, so there's gonna be that. But yeah, I mean, other than that, they're pretty good. So hopefully I don't have to test them fully to where I drop my bike. Uh, but that's what I got them for is I wanna do some um, slow maneuvering, practicing things like that in a parking lot. And I want to have some sort of protection in case I do um, drop it low side. I'll give an update if I end up having to use them. Um, hopefully, once again, I don't have to. Hopefully I don't have to talk about how good or bad they were because I've dropped it so many times. But they're there for that reason, at least from the build quality that I have seen while I was holding them and just kind of installing it. The ends on these are um, pretty sturdy. It almost feels like a metal, but it's just a polymer and they are replaceable. So you can swap those out if you hit one side or the other. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you found it useful. If you're looking into these, they seem like really good uh, frame sliders from what I found. Uh, but stay tuned for more videos, guys. Uh, hopefully I'll have some more on this bike and some accessories for it.